my mother always told me that I could do anything I wanted if I wanted it enough, if I persevered. Then the Cambridge English Dictionary comes along and steals my mother's thunder, making perseverance the word of the year 2021. Perseverance is defined as continued effort to do or achieve something, even when it's difficult or takes a long time. Like all of you, I've been doing rather a lot of persevering over the last 20 months. I'm co-owner of two Dublin food businesses. Olive's Room is a tea room in St. Anne's Park and Monk's Green is a restaurant in Phippsburg. My partners are my sister Michelle and her husband Liam. And I now also work as a policy researcher with the environmental NGO Voice, the voice of Irish concern for the environment. When COVID-19 arrived, I thought Mother Nature was not so nicely playing with us, giving her two fingers to human activity. Global warming is also undeniably caused by our activity. So Mother Nature says, serves you feckers right, but for all the pain and misery the pandemic caused and continues to cause us, what lessons have we learned? Despite our dramatic reduction in movement, greenhouse gas emissions reduced by only 3.6% in 2020, which is 25% less than the 4.8% reduction in carbon emissions proposed by the Climate Change Advisory Council for each of the next five years. So over the next 15 minutes, I would like to talk about the challenges confronted by our small business during the pandemic, the skills that have helped us cope and persevere, and how these skills can help us prepare for things to come in terms of climate change and how small businesses can benefit from being part of the response and need to be supported to prepare for the changes that are coming. So just looking at that slide there of uh, it's a it's a picture that went viral on Instagram um, from a restaurant in Italy at the start of lockdown and health professionals may laugh when I say that it seems to me that restaurant businesses were under enormous pressure during the pandemic. There was the public education piece and public criticism. We were superfluous to survival, yet we were such an important touchstone of normality. We had livelihoods to maintain, but there were lives at stake and it was such a difficult path to negotiate. If any of you have the time, you should look up the article written by Prune owner. Um, about her experience at the start of lockdown in New York. It really reflects how so many restaurant businesses felt at the time of the pandemic and were in a crisis as to where they should go next. In our business, in 26 years, we had only ever been closed for Christmas and Stephen's Day and for very short periods during our refurbishment. Power cuts, water cups, we'd never given up before. On Sunday, I was standing in the kitchen in the restaurant in a state of complete panic. Customer had fallen off cliff but still some people came in the door. I texted Pascal Donahue, who is a TD for our constituency and used to have his office next door. Please lock us down. Can you imagine begging to be shut down? On St. Patrick's Day, usually one of the busiest days of the year for our business, we sat at home instead. Some people describe having these lovely lockdowns with the opportunity to reset their priorities and spend time with family. We just kept going and going. Reopening the restaurant after six weeks was like trying to open a new restaurant. Uh, we wrote new menus for takeaway. We learned about infection prevention and control. We bought signage and sanitizer and face masks, so many face masks. Uh, getting the team back time after time was really difficult. Uh, on Taoiseach was quoted in Image magazine recently as saying, there are two choices in life. You either continue to stay down or you get back up again. And there's that old chestnut we've mentioned, perseverance. In terms of ch challenges, our biggest concern initially was laying off our team, helping them get the pandemic unemployment payment and any other allowances they might be entitled to, working out wage subsidies, being on hold with revenue and social welfare, trying to understand the many tweaks and updates of the system as it was adapted to the ongoing situation. Getting our team back to work was very difficult for a variety of reasons and getting new staff is even more tricky. COVID has created rigidities in the labour market that are going to take a while to iron out and in parallel to that we have an accommodation crisis that is making it difficult for people to work in small businesses in Ireland and enjoy a reasonable standard of living. Another challenge that we have faced is to do with our customers. As well as a restaurant business we found that there was a public education and public order role to play most people in fairness were so delighted to be able to purchase a cappuccino and eat a sandwich they hadn't made themselves uh, that they didn't make a peep about all the pain in the ass regulations that we had to implement. But there were also customers who were blithely unaware of any restrictions. 
there were anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers to deal with. Since last March, we have in fact been shouted at rather a lot, more than one might call civilized, taken to the task by those who believe we are disgraced, greedy and reckless on the one hand, and those on the other hand, who believe we are the cafe incarnation of 1984 and have cursed us liberally and liber literally for depriving them of their rights. In short, since the beginning of the pandemic, we've experienced a new strain of difficult customers who it has been our unique challenge to love and have leave the premises as quickly as possible. For us, in terms of sustainability, the biggest challenge uh, has been the proliferation during the pandemic of takeaway packaging, which has been necess necessitated by the obligation to run your business solely for takeaway. And I just touch here on the work that I've taken up with Voice, which, as I mentioned, is an environmental NGO. And they asked me to look at uh, the presence of chemicals of concern in takeaway food packaging and other food contact materials in the Irish market. Really enjoying that policy and advocacy work. And I find it brings a balance to my own uh, personal experience of being in the restaurant business and also going about my life during this time of the pandemic and uh, the climate crisis where there is so much uncertainty. It makes me feel like I'm actually uh, making a contribution and doing something that ha might help change things for the better. In general terms, and looking at the climate crisis, the awareness that both personally and as a business, I'm part of a system of agriculture that contributes to global warming is crushing. We are part of a system that instead of supporting growers to feed us sustainably and earn a decent living was rigged by subsidizing dairy production and that continues to indenture farmers to meat processors and supermarket chains while we consumers spend ever decreasing proportions of our income on fresh produce. If I'm honest, I find this the most challenging and upsetting aspect of both my work and personal existence. And that's despite and possibly even because I'm vegetarian so I find the, the, the being part of this system even more difficult because of the hypocrisy of it, if that makes sense. So I was asked to, to talk about the skills that have helped us to cope and persevere during this crisis. And if I'm going to attempt to analyze those skills, I'd like to, to discuss for a second what it means to have a crisis. Uh, using the Cambridge Dictionary again, it defines a crisis as a time of great disagreement, confusion or suffering, an extremely difficult or dangerous point in a situation. The interesting thing about the word crisis is that it's actually from the Greek crisis to distinguish, choose or decide. We tend to use the words crisis and disaster as if they mean the same thing, but we shouldn't. I think that it's important to note that a crisis does not have to mean a disaster. And a disaster is defined as an event that results in great harm, damage or death or serious difficulty. So crises and disasters may have things in common. They may overlap as they do here, but they are not the same thing. The pandemic has been both a disaster and a crisis, but at least in defining it as a crisis, we acknowledge the element of choice and management. That element of choice is so important. Uh, it gives us hope, it keeps us going. And if we make the right choices, we may be able to minimize, minimize the effects of the disaster. In a crisis, it's important to communicate. It doesn't matter if you're telling people what you do know or what you don't know. What matters is that they feel included in your thinking process. Oftentimes during the pandemic, I had no idea what was going on or what to tell our team, but nobody likes to be left in the dark. So even if you feel like you're in the dark too, they may not realize that and it's important to communicate that you are trying to formulate a plan or to communicate your uncertainty and give options. This applies not only to your team, uh, who are the most important people, but also to your bank, the tax man, your customers the and the public. It boils down to this as far as communicating with your team. Um, coming to work is not just about earning money, it's about leaving your personal life behind submerging yourself in a different experience and sharing that experience with others. Experience where for some blood, sweat and tears you can, and in exchange for a mediocre salary, you can excel at what you do and find companionship in doing it. So to maintain our relationships, 
uh, and keep the show on the road, we were in constant communication with our team to let them know what was going on. In March 2020, then Hishok Leo Varadkar noted that takeaway foods could amount to up to 30% of our calories. He asked food businesses to pivot, to be clever. At the time, I thought that was all very well for the Chinese takeaway, but he was talking rubbish. I completely underestimated the capacity of food businesses to reinvent themselves and the support the customers are willing to show to those businesses. They say that a crisis brings great creativity, and we saw that the street food trend exploded as we could literally only eat food on the street. Restaurant reviewers were soon back in business reviewing dinner boxes, and when they gushed, the boxes sold out just as tables did before. This success must be caveated by the acknowledgement that it would not be possible to have adapted in this way for the majority of businesses and to survive doing this were it not, be, were it not for the supports that were and still are in place. But it, it was possible to at least keep food businesses relevant to keep some people employed and people occupied and people fed, entertained and diverted. Just as restaurant businesses adapted to selling takeaway dinner boxes, they also adapted to e-commerce. Many more adaptations would be needed to tackle the climate crisis, just one of which is the dramatic reduction required in the use of takeaway packaging. In this regard, food businesses will need to embrace reuse systems on a grand scale. They will need to employ reverse logistics and customers will learn to buy the product and not the packaging. Third skill or competency that is important for me personally in remaining calm and upbeat is the ability to main, maintain perspective. The deaths of our loved ones from this disease is a tragedy. The loss of life, the closure of businesses, the obliteration of livelihoods, these things are completely devastating. But in order to be able for the crises when they come, and they will continue to come over our lifetime, becoming more frequent, in order to steal ourselves for these crises, I think we must ga gain and keep our perspective. Perspective means to compare something to other things so that it can be accurately and fairly judged. It's difficult to main pers per perspect maintain perspective about a pandemic when none of us have ever experienced one. There have been pandemics in our lifetime, MERS, SARS, swine flu, Ebola, HIV, but they did not have the same or in most cases any effect on the population here. But all I can say is that I found that learning about these historical crises did help me maintain and channel my anxiety. It also helps me in terms of the climate change crisis uh, and in terms of the pandemic to review my family and my business situation from a global perspective. In terms of the climate crisis, it gives me hope when I hear that in Sweden they are using food waste that fuels the bus system. It gives me hope that in Denmark they're making biocharcoal from food waste. It breaks my heart to see the wildfires in California and Australia flooding in Central Europe, but unlike the un underdeveloped countries that have been suffering the effects of climate change for decades, these countries have resources uh, to deal with these problems and the arrival of the effects of the crisis at our door gives me some hope that it will spur us to action. In this regard, I do worry about our narrowing global perspective and when our headlines become utterly domesticated and micro-focused turning in on ourselves and raising the drawbridge cannot protect us from the climate change crisis. So looking at the challenges that our small food business has faced and uh, looking at the skills and competencies that, competencies that we developed in response, the question is how small businesses can benefit from being part of the response and need to be supported in order to prefer, prepare for the climate crisis. By way of conclusion, and having looked at the challenges we face and the skills that I believe have been useful during the pandemic and will be useful during the much greater climate crisis, small businesses will need to be supported by providing them with certainty. So clear top-down regulation that is informed by direct communication with those businesses and feedback from those businesses. They can be supported by fairnesses, businesses, in different sectors must be treated fairly and transparently. When different rules are applied to different businesses, the justification needs to be made clear. Otherwise, we will create a wedge of resentment that could damage the cohesiveness of our response to the climate crisis. And finance, 
Just as with the pandemic, there will be a transition period during which businesses will need to be supported in order to change their systems of their operation. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen. And if you any, have any questions, uh, please put them in the app and I look forward to answering them in the Q&A.